Wilson Morales from Black Feminine TV. How's it going, Nate? How are you? I'm better now, brother. I'm always happy to talk to you. All right. So you put this movie nearly over a year ago. Obviously, you know, when you were thinking about the next project to make, how did this story come to you? Well, I, uh, I actually adopted my nephew um, from Virginia, Portsmouth, Virginia. He's, he was now since going to USC, uh, but brought him into my household, you know, to be a father to him. His father was in prison and put him in a very good school, gave him all the things I thought would make sure that he would be, uh, ha have, a, have a, a tenure in, in this environment with no incident. And then uh, Michael Brown gets shot and he gets murdered. And then my nephew comes to me and says, Uncle Nate, what do I do if I get pulled over by the police? Uh, and I realized very quickly that while I, had, with great intentions, brought him to an environment I thought was safer, uh, I took him out of the frying pan into the fire because now this, you know, 14 year old, six foot dark skinned boy uh, was now in a very precarious position because at any moment his life could be taken on these affluent streets. Uh, and, it, and he asked me and I didn't have an answer for him. You know, I tried, you know, you call me, oh, don't call me. I don't want you to move to your phone. Uh, you know, just put your hands up, put your feet down slow, make eye contact with the cops so you can see her humanity. And my nephew's looking at me like terrified. And I realized that I was, uh, I was traumatizing him. And that was the, kind of the first kernel of, I have to do something. You know, my tool is my art. I have to create something for my nephew and son and everyone's sons and daughters that can at least not be a, a magic bullet, but take us one step closer, it's one step deeper into forcing a conversation around our humanity and the policing that is often um, exploitative and subjugates us uh, in a way that we know, um, but we're often ignored when it comes to making demands around uh, re you know, reinstating that humanity. So the film came out of that relationship as my, my nephew, as almost like a letter to him to say, nephew, I'm trying, you know, to, to, to make it so when I'm gone and I'm on my deathbed, you, your children, and their children, and their children will feel like they were people that stood in the gap and tried to create the type of change that would save lives. There's your perspective. Did you do any research in what you were putting together? So that's just not just one side from your, per from your oh view. I, it's interesting because I interviewed dozens of uh, police officers. And it's interesting because every single one of them spoke on the condition of anonymity. You know, it was as if the line of questioning they knew would lead to them having to answer a question in a way that would reveal something. Um, and I wanted to be fair, you know? I know that when a black man is murdered, a black woman is murdered, and the officer swept away and they come back with some canned statement. Um, I know the impact that has on the community. And I know that the, the divide of trust is further widened. Uh, so I felt like getting that perspective, you know, hold, even if it meant creating a hostage situation, I felt like it would be important to hear what, what is being, what these thoughts are, what's happening in the mind of a person that shoots someone or sees, you know, Andre Hill sees a cell phone and still pulls the trigger. Um, so there was a great amount of, uh, of research that went into it. Um, and all things that I think contributed to the story that I felt was honest and un unapologetic about where we are right now. You know, this film isn't a magic bullet. This film doesn't have all the answers. I definitely don't have all the answers, but I just wanted to present an unapologetic truth. You know, as Nina Simone said, reflect the times as to where we are so we can so we can kind of circumvent the the pacifying of our narrative because as you know we 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 have these moments where we realize just how you know dangerous it is to be black in America and then the next sports cycle starts or whatever uh, and we just have a way of forgetting so I'm just trying to you know as an artist and the artist that I come with in my cast I think that you know we all just wanted to contribute to the conversation in a way that can bring it to the forefront of consciousness in this time that we didn't know we would be living in, but in a time where we need to talk about what is happening in America and the double standards that we're facing every single day. This, could have, this movie could have been a John Q, it could have been a Charles Bronson type of film, but it's a timeless film because you could have played this 10 years ago, two years ago, it's coming out now, you can play 10 years ago, because obviously, as we see, 
the situation at any given time, you're hearing mm -hmm. about a situation where they're not doing anything to the cops, you right. know? And so uh, Vanessa, actually, Vanessa Bell Calloway said, this is sort of like a what if type of film, you know? Mm -hmm. um, what is the message you want from people to come out of this, you know? So that when they look at this and for a lot of young individuals, because this is what they're experiencing now. It's, for me, it's, it's simple. Unless we do something differently, we will continue to be killed. And that's everywhere, that, that is pervasive. If we don't, if we can't keep doing the same thing expecting a different, a different outcome, um, you know, which is why the film starts in the way it does. He gives justice a chance. He gives the justice system a chance, but the justice system is broken. And I know that cops know that too, because I've talked to them. So the question is, what are we going to do to stop this record from skipping and repeating? If the answer is uh -huh. nothing, then that is a that is a, a devastating legacy to hand off to our children. You got a cast of familiar faces that a lot of us know. Um, did everybody come on board right away when you sent them the script? You know, yeah. I mean, it's interesting because you know Omari is my brother and friend, and so I reached out to him. He was shooting power, and I said, "Brother, I have something uh, for us." And, and I say us, all caps. He said, brother, anything you're doing, I'm down. I was like, well, are you gonna be able to get away? He said, don't worry about it. So I sent him the script, read the script. He said, brother, I'm in. And, um, and the Omari way that he does, uh -huh. as poetically as he, he speaks, uh -huh. he said, I'm here. And he showed up. It was, I didn't have to deal with anything else. He just found a way. Uh, same thing with you know Theo. I found Shane in a, in, he auditioned for me for a different project. And he was so captivating, you know, his eyes, his disposition, I feel like he embodies a, a young courtier. And I wouldn't say that about everyone, but there's something that happens in his eyes when he's just thinking and watching and being introspective. And I said to him, I said, I have a project I want you to read. It's not done yet, but you are the man. You are the, the lead of the film. This is Shane. He was like, I was like, you are the lead. I'm a father, pushed to a moment, but you are the lead of this film because it's on you to push the narrative and take this narrative to the rest of the world. And, uh, and he came on board. Vanessa Bell Calloway, whom I adore and I've adored since I was, how old, how old was I coming to America? Uh, she is everything, you know? Uh, and knowing I had her, knowing I had Milana, Sierra, the women in this film were just incredible. Uh, seeing the brokenness of Milana when she represented the mother. And we've seen too many mothers crying, so many mothers being, you know, goaded into to, to, to dif disarming us, you know? Um, I wanted to represent the pain of what it must be like for a, a black woman who one has to carry the black community on her back and then has to bury her sons and daughters and husbands and uncles and cousins and, you know, uh, and nieces and nephews. And so the cast just showed up. Theo Rossi, I mean, remarkable actor. He read it and said, oh no, there's nothing you can do to make me not want to be a part of this. Uh, and then there's the, uh, you know, and this, you know, Bo Knapp, I met him in a meeting. He was emotional. He said, I need to be a part of this. This is the conversation I'm having every day amongst my peers. Um, but the real ringers for me, um, you know, were those brothers that played the, um, the inmates. Uh, outside of Mo McRae, who was rem a remarkable actor, uh, we had, you know, some of our, most of our inmates were returning citizens. They were actual inmates. Even in that, in our film, we had over, two lifetimes represented in prison time done, you know, but giving, you know, working with Scott Butnick and uh, ARC, we give a lot of brothers and sisters chances, uh, you know, to, to, to do whatever their skill was on our project. And some of that were, were, were the young uh, men in that jury. And I pulled them aside before we started. And I said, for all the times you've had your humanity stripped, for all the times you wanted to speak to a cop or a guard that was violating you, now is your chance. And so that energy you feel you know, one of the brothers is unfortunately back in prison, unjustly, it's a whole nother thing, but the brother with the black eye, like, he just come home, just come home. You know, the Latino brother, just come home, fresh. And that, so the energy in the room was a very, very real energy. And I thought that was important to creating a, an honest and, and you know narrative. You know, we broke the fourth wall a lot. I wanted, you know, I've heard it said that good filmmaking is making you feel like you were there. So I just wanted people to feel like they were inside the trial. You know, they were inside the deliberation room. 
they were they were feeling this. We looked into the camera that they were that 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 they would be uncomfortable. You know, if people leave this film and they can just go to some restaurant and eat and not think about it, I failed everyone. And I'm you know, and I apologize for that. But I hope that's not the case. This is your second film. Uh, you are an actor, a writer, a producer, a director. You've seen the spectrum from all of those uh, uh, positions. How have you grown as you continue to make films, as you, can, as you made this film, as you made Solitary? You know, uh, so how have you grown? You've seen the industry. You know what's going to work or not based on the different positions you've been in. Mm -hmm. Well, I think... I've grown in so many, many ways. You know, I'm 41 now. I've been in this industry since 2003. Uh, and the things that I've seen, just the man that I am, the way I look at things, the way I approach art, um, I think now more than ever, it is important for the artist to reflect the times, now more than ever. Uh, because if the next 50 years is like the last 50 years, then we're in trouble. You know, I don't think that we can put this off much longer. Uh, this, this desperate need to challenge the status quo when it comes to the value of, of our black bodies. And it just so happens that I'm blessed enough to be able to do it in film. You know, solitary works with the prison industrial complex and, and solitary confinement and the impact that has on the psyche of in particular this black man and how it impacts his family. So often we think about prison and our brothers and sisters who, who are being violated uh, by being incarcerated, so many of them, um, but we forget that they come home and there's no support system. If it's true that there is a prison, you know, school to prison pipeline, if it's true that the education system is broken uh, and, and, and needs to be reconfigured to say, say the least, if all of that is true and if it's true that so many of our young brothers and sisters are being stopped and frisked and, and, and in, in situations in their communities where their the policing uh, of their bodies is is, is 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 just brutal. If all this is true, then what's to be said about the impact of their on, on their psyche and the in the in the in the in the, in the healing that needs to happen within the, in their minds and bodies. So you know I say this often, you know, I'm not a perfect man, but everything I do, I do for us. That is true. I've dedicated my art. <laughs> Are you excited? Just to make this, I'm gonna wrap it up. Yeah. You know, timing is everything. Timing is perfect for that. This movie can be seen by everyone. Yes. Uh, we're not worried about the box office where, you know, certain movies be played in 4,000 screens and others in a, in a thousand. Here, everybody's on the same playing field. That's you right. know, and it, it's their choice to, to, where they can see it. Obviously, you got a lot of traction when the trailer came out and this is coming out. So how happy are you that there's more people, that, there's more accessibility of seeing, of people seeing this movie? I'm very, I'm ecstatic because you make a film and you know the game. You never know if it's going to be seen. You know, you 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 make it for the right reasons. You hope that it resonates. You hope that it can speak to people. And you hope in the in the case of this film that it can really affect change. You know, if if one life is saying saved from now until doomsday because some cop hesitated because some movie he saw whenever where he just thought about some monologue, we win and we win forever. That is a life that can continue forever and ever. So. For me, seeing this film, not just, you know, in my, in, in, in LA or in, in, in Virginia, my home state, but in North America, South America, you know, there we're, we're trying to get the film global uh, to, to really deal with every place where people feel marginalized, specifically by policing and, and authorities that marginalize people. So the fact that it's going to be seen, and like you said, and, and I don't have to, and there's no fear that if it doesn't open to whatever, there's none of that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a tremendous blessing. You know, it's 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 a it's 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 tough what's happening in our industry. Um, a lot of people are, are suffering. A lot of people are, you know, whether it be physically or in health, but also with you know, economically. Um, but like you said, now is the time for independent filmmakers that have something to say, and they have something to contribute to the lexicon of of healing when it comes to our people and what's happening to us. Now is the time to put it out. Nate, congratulations on continuing to tell stories that we want to hear, that we want to see. Obviously, you got more projects down the road that we're going to want to hear about and want to see. Keep Thank doing your thing. We're here to support. Just all I'm saying, stay safe and have a good one. Thank you. You too, brother. Take care. Take care.